All right, we're back for our Sapien podcast, interstitial episodes that we still don't have a name yet. We have a guest this time. We have Martin O'Toole calling in from Tasmania, all the way from Australia. He's a fitness and wellness instructor, and he's got a great story, and he's about to turn 70, and he's living well. He's fit. He's great. Uh, let's uh, have him introduce himself and tell, tell us what you do. Uh, yeah, well, it's, it's a real pleasure, Brian. I've been really looking forward to this. Um, yeah, I'm, I turn 70 in, in May next year. And what I basically do is uh, I had a history in, uh, of um, uh, basically, uh, like everybody else, I suppose, growing up where all we did was we, uh, we folks, actually, I, if you, if, probably best to go forward till about the early 70s when I had a young family and I got caught up in this, um, in this, uh, I suppose, low, low fat, high carb type of living. And to this day, I feel a little bit guilty that I brought my, my children up in this, in this world of, uh, of uh, uh, I suppose, uh, this new way of looking at health and or I suppose nutrition in terms of, uh, you know, low carb, um, uh, sorry, high carb, um, margarine, uh, bread, uh, all of these things that, that I think uh, contributed to not only my own uh, bad health, but uh, I feel a little bit guilty. I probably shouldn't, but uh, because I didn't know any better, um, that I, uh, you know, brought my, my, my children up and uh, my family up in this world. And, uh, but I suppose um, it's like everything in life. We all have what I call... Um, Harajuki moments where something happens in your life that just changes things forever. It's like closing a book and then opening another part of that book. And that closing of the book, I suppose, happened back in 19, uh, fast forward to about 1991, when I lost my, uh, my wife and I lost our uh, middle daughter, Alison, to, uh, to suicide. And uh, um it's uh, as i said it's one of those uh, you know you wouldn't wish it on your worst enemy um but your life completely uh flips and you 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 uh, i mean i won't go through all of the details but my life completely changed there was like this life before and now there's all of a sudden i had this life um life afterwards and i suppose i i've struggled from then until basically now with, uh, with, with uh, mental health issues as a result of that. And, uh, you know, I, I commiserate with anybody that's, that's been through this. And of course, we've got another spike in it through a different reason, reason with COVID and all the, uh, and all the, um, the uh, knock on effects of that. So I had to, I got to a point where I had to uh, do something to improve my mental health and my physical health, it led to my physical health. So um, I, I, I swam around in this pit of despair uh, and all of a sudden um, I thought, look, I've got to do something. I put on a lot of weight. Uh, I literally just didn't want to live anymore. It was, it was, that, it was that powerful of, uh, of, um, of a life-changing um, event. But if you fast forward to... Um, I swam around in different businesses and I never was really successful in those businesses because I had this mental cloud that was following me around everywhere. And to this day, I still have episodes where I just want to sit back and, uh, and, and, and try and fight these uh, demons of guilt and, and everything else that, that go with that. But uh, if, you, if you really want to bring it forward to this um, situation of where um, I had to do something to change um, how I was living my life. And, and it led me down this path um, of, um, I, I was searching around for something. And of course, there's every diet out there. There's everything that, 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 that uh, makes you, you know, that says, this is the fix for this, this is the fix for that. And I literally um, almost stumbled on, on something that, um, it was life changing, and if you if you want to really sum it up in in one word, I, I suppose you can spin it around into all different words. But uh, if you bring it forward to to something like sapien, um, sapien ancestral, um, whatever you want to call it, in terms of of changing the way 
I had to fuel my body because if I, I felt if I, if I fueled my body better, I'd, I'd obviously fuel my mind better. So it took me down this path of, uh, of um, all of a sudden changing what I do to basically, um, I can't, I know what it was. I read a book. Um, I can't remember how I got it, but I read a book by a fellow by the name, he's an American by the name of Dr. William Davis. He wrote a book by the name of Wheat Belly, and I'm looking at the book right now. And, and whilst, uh, as I go through all of your podcasts, Brian, and I've listened to most of them, mm -hmm. uh, I tend to gravitate to certain ones. I've, I've gravitated towards um, um, uh, uh, the chap that I was just listening to um, recently. Uh, what was his name? Episode 106, I think it is. Um, oh, the really Sean recent Amara. one. Sean yeah, Amara. Dr. Sean O'Mara. Yeah, he's Dr. great. He's, 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 yeah, he's trying to get the older generation into being mm. fit and staying well. Yeah, so I gravitated more towards um, of his stuff, but, but uh, the, the, the one that really stands out to me uh, as being a sort of an ordinary, everyday kind of guy, but living in another part of the world is um, Frederick, the, the reindeer herder. And, mm -hmm. and the thing that really sticks in my mind with that one was his father who uh, cross country skied for about 21 miles um, he had to visit a friend and came back and a fortnight later passed away. Um, and I think as, a, as our old, the, the older generation, um, and I fight this all the time, I fight um, uh, negativity in terms of um, how people sh these days should be viewing their health. Um, and because I tend to focus more on the older group, I, you know, I figure I'm experienced. <laughs> because I am one at, at nearly 70 years of age. And I do things now through this ancestral lifestyle that I, I, I wouldn't have dreamt of doing. And, and people look at me and uh, I suppose there's a little bit of ego in all of us. We want to look well as well as feel well. Uh, and I hopefully want to inspire people to, to live the way that, that, that I live, to be able to, um, uh, to, to I suppose, I like the term um, not adding years to your life, but life to your years. And I see a lot of people in this age group that I work in, even the age group that I work in with my arthritis work, um, where they're living in these old age homes. I don't know what you call them in America. I call them God's waiting rooms. Um, where, um, you know, they're living, they're not getting their vitamin D. Um, um, and, but there's all kinds of reasons why they're just not, um, living um, the kind of life that they can live if only they get away from um, mainstream um, media. I mean, I, I, all of a sudden you've got people like dietitians and nutritionists, wherever they came from. I, I, I don't know when I was growing up and didn't even hear of them. So I don't know where they sprung up from. So in, in effect, I suppose, if you, if you want to sum it all up, uh, I, I changed the way I go about what I do because um, what I've done has worked. And it's, I don't, I just cannot understand why. Um, I, I suppose we'll talk a little bit about physically what I do to keep, to keep fit, uh, because not only nutrition, although I still believe that it's the vast majority of it is, is nutrition. And I'm not so much into exercise, I'm more into movement. I work a lot with joint mobility or getting people moving better um, with uh, you know, just how the, it's not so much exercise. It's more about just moving better, getting up and down off the floor without using your hands. Uh, I see people get up and down on the floor, and they've got a almost. Um, it's painful to watch, and it doesn't have to be that way. Um, it, 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 it's you just have to take control of what you're doing and and try and 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 yeah. I, I, it's very, it's sometimes I just get that passionate about what I do that um, it's hard to put it all together because it's, mm. I just want people at my age, if, if I can change the world one person at a time to do what I do at my age and older, because um, I don't, I don't just don't feel older. I, I just feel as if I could literally live till I'm 150. I, I, I who knows? I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I believe but, it. I believe it. But, I think we're going to get there soon. Yeah. So, why don't, Dr. Gary, why don't you step in and kind of ask some questions here? Yeah, I mean, I, I love what, what a story. Um, 
I'm sorry about your family. Wow. Um, you know, I see a lot of older folks, right? In my practice, I see yeah. tons of older folks and, and these, uh, these places, these God's waiting room, as you say, uh, <laughs> it's where I work. I, I go there. I, I was at four different locations just today. And, um, yeah. you know, what, what, what your story made me think about and, and just, you know, crushing it at 70, right? It, it's, or 69, right? Yeah. What, you know, what it makes me think about, and I was just having this conversation with my parents who are r- right there, pretty close to 70 themselves. And uh, what it makes me think about is this idea of th- that we've taught people, and, and I think this disproportionately affects the older generations, um, a, a baseline of like sucking. <laughs> <laughs> to use a funny word, just a baseline of, you know, I hit my 60s, everything's going to hurt. I'm not going to be able to do what I used to do. I'm going to start eating this diet that is supposed to make me healthier, but it's expediting very, very slowly expediting my my demise, essentially, is how I look at it. When you feed yeah. people all these carbs and junk, you know, mm-hmm. start giving people these like, like meal replacement shakes, which are just sugar, <laughs> you know, yes. and it's so... Yeah. So to me, it's this idea, you know, as, you know, it's this idea of, you know, expecting to feel the way you feel at 70 or 69, right? Like expecting and creating that expectation uh, as, a, as, as a first place, right? Like I know we're going to talk and I want to hear what you do. And, and I'm sure, you know, it, it's very much in line with what we recommend. And I love the word movement instead of exercise because I think movement – is the right idea there, right? It's movement. It's enjoy yourself, use your body. Um, That's right. And so, you know, it just makes me think of this, like creating this expectation and and clearly like this disastrous, you know, situation in your family drove you to seek answers and Mm -hmm. that changed your expectations and your expectations were like, I'm not going to be depressed. I'm not going to be miserable. I'm going to figure this out. And, oh, mm-hmm. wow, here's this whole other way of eating, whole other way of living, whole other way of perceiving supplementation and, and exercise, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think that to me is like the message I wish people will take from you is because I know we're going to talk about the same kind of recommendations, but like just expect to do well, expect to crush it, expect to learn and get better and, and do things you've never done before mm-hmm. until you drop dead and die. And, mm-hmm. and if you expect that kind of life, you will get a much more beautiful life. I mean, anything could happen. You know, we're exposed to all sorts of toxins we can't control and, and shit happens mm. to people, right? Mm. But, yeah, but, if, but if you expect a bomb life, if you expect to really crush it, you will. Mm. On some, a lot more than if you expect to feel like shit. So, yeah. wow, thank you. Yeah, yep. Thank you. So tell us... Um, what, what is, so other than the nutrition, which I agree, I think is the heart of it. What, what, what are these other components of your life that you think gives you so much youth and, and exuberance? Uh, I, uh, there's no doubt. Um, I think Sean Amara talks about it. Uh, and I woke up to this some time back, uh, was, was, uh, I, I think, um, um, uh, Mark Sisson talks about it. Um, and he talks about the three, uh, the three things that we're supposed to do as, as humans. Um, one is walk long distances. The second one is lift heavy things. Uh, and the third one is sprint once in a while. So I do all of those. Um, but one of the things um, I'm, one of the things that I haven't mentioned um, is uh, I became a kettlebell instructor yeah. around about 12 years ago. And that literally did change my life. Um, I've, I've, uh, I've, I currently instruct and I've been doing it for the last seven years. Um, and, uh, un- <laughs> I suppose I shouldn't say unfortunately, but I, but I, I, I will, unfortunately, um, because of financial circumstances, I ended up working in a, and I still to this day work in a local fitness center. Um, and I work basically with older people because I gave up with younger people. I, I think they looked at me. Uh, some of the, a lot of the younger people and thought, well, you know, if I can't bench press twice my body weight, um, then I'm, I'm not, you know, I, I shouldn't be respected or I had that all the time. So 
I've got away from, I still do kettlebell um, uh, instruction, mainly for older people for movement. Um, but getting back to what I do, I suppose, um, uh, the, kettlebell, the kettlebell swing uh, is one of those, mo- <laughs> mm-hmm. is one That's of those my movements. Thing. I love that, it. Dr. Um, Gary's fired up. You can't see him he's when he's up. not talking, but he's cheering. <laughs> One of the things that I that I uh, figured out many, many years ago. Now, uh, uh, there's a lot of different kettlebell exercises, but there's two that I focus on as an older person. Um, one is the kettlebell swing. Um, and I say to people, if there was one exercise that I could do that covered all bases, it would be the kettlebell swing. And the second one is the Turkish getup. And... Um, I'm sure Dr. Gary will know what that one is, seeing as he got a little bit excited about it. Heck yeah. um, there, are, there, there are those two. But um, if you really narrow it down, I'm getting back to what Sean O'Mara talked about with sprinting. And what I do um, is twice a week, I swing a 32, kettle, 32 kilo kettlebell. And I've always had this thing where I've wanted to swing it to my age without putting it down. So now I swing a kettlebell twice a week, uh, 32 kilo kettlebell, 69 times without putting it down. Um, and that gives me everything. It gives me cardio. It gives me mobility. It gives me uh, core strength. Uh, it certainly gives me breath breathing with, with biomechanical breathing that you do with a kettlebell um, swing. Um, so kettlebells, I would have to say that kettlebells have changed my life. I do body weight training as well. Um, so I do a lot of pull-ups. Um, I do a lot of, uh, uh, don't do a lot of push-ups as such. In fact, I love the theory of, I love the rule of five. Now I discovered this years ago where you pick the hardest exercise that you can do. Um, and you, let's say, for example, it might be a close, close grip pull-up and you'll do five with strict form. They're called the Russian tactical pull-up. So it's like a, a very uh, slight leg, straight leg raise. Um, and you, with good form, dead hang, uh, get up to say five um, pull-ups. Uh, and you can adopt this with anything. Five pull-ups, wait around about a minute, even two minutes, and then do four pull-ups, strict form, wait about two minutes, three, two, one. One, so it's, they're, they're, I suppose they're basically descending ladders, um, and I find that that works really, really, um, really, really well with me. Uh, uh, you can do the same with um, you can do the same with with uh, push-ups. Although the other thing that I've been doing recently, um, I, I call it the trifecta, um, which is 10, 20, 30. So if you did and again, it's, I suppose it's multiples of five. Um, if, you did, if you did 10 pull-ups, uh, 20 push-ups, 30 uh, squats, take a decent break, and then go back and reduce it by another one, two, three. So you'll go 10, 20, 30, 9, 18, 27, 8, 16, 24, 7, 14, 21. Mm. And uh, you'll come back, and that'll if with decent breaks that takes you. If I want to really push it out, I will tend to do. I've, I call it the trifecta, where you work your way down, and that's something that really does uh, push you. Although, yeah, as I said, I keep on coming back to this um, to this um, um, uh, uh, kettlebell swing, uh, heavy kettlebell swings. Um, I've got a kettlebell called the Beast, which <laughs> which is 48 kilos, and I, I swing that. Sometimes I'll swing that 30 times without putting it down, um, and it just gives you everything that you want. Um, so um, it's it's interesting because uh, I, I, as I said, I work in this gym with a lot of younger people, and with the 32 kilo kettlebell uh, swing, uh, I've had a couple of really big, strong, fit young. But blokes um, and the most I've had them do without walking away in frustration is 18. Mm. Yeah. So they go, how did you do that? Well, a lot of it's technique, form, uh, breathing. Um, 
but yeah, I suppose I've, I've got a, got away from it a little bit. But I love the kettlebell. Mm-hmm. Um, if I had one exercise, I call it the handheld gym. Tell yeah, well, Gary. Yeah, yeah. So I I lifted weights my whole life, um, and got kind of over it. Um, it was, you know, uh, I don't know. I did kind of Arnold Schwarzenegger style working out, and it was always fun. But I I kind of I, I don't know, there was always something missing. And then in, um, when I was in my training, I, my friend showed me a kettlebell and I thought, you know, just like all the dudes are like, mm. this, what is this? I don't know. Like, this is silly. Mm. I need to put up weight. Like I'm trying to get big. I'm trying to get right. And, uh, I was lucky enough to work with a trainer and mm-hmm. she taught me how to really do a swing. And yeah. there was definitely like with the food stuff, there was an aha moment. And That's I think right. since that day, I've done swings multiple really? times a week, multiple oh, times a week, my whole life. I've got a 32 kilo yep. uh, in the room and I, I'm trying to find a bigger one. Um, I, yeah. I, I'd love 40, it. 40, 48 kilos. Yeah, That's I love it. Uh, yeah, no, I, I think uh, when I talk to people about work, working out and movement, I think the kettlebell swing, if I can have you do one thing, uh, it would be the kettlebell swing. I think building the posterior chain creates resilience. Um, no, it's not sexy beach muscles, but when your dog pulls you or you step funny off a curb, your body's yeah. going to like tolerate that stress because Correct. you can swing a 48 kilogram, you know, you could do this dynamic motion and that, you know, for people that don't know the kettlebell swing, it engages your entire posterior chain from the top of Correct. your head down through, through your ankles. No, again, you're, you're not going to have pecs and biceps, but you're going to be, you're going to be healthy and fit yeah. and your body's going to be. It got me becoming, um, I call it, and I'm sure you relate to it, Dr. Gary, is that you become lean strong. Right. Uh, I just, I found that like injuries, right? I understand why it works for arthritis. It just, it creates this core that you can't see, but it, it lets everything else be easier in your life. Correct. Picking up a bag. The crossover effect is amazing. Crossover I effect. It, I bet it's your core and I bet it's something to do with the fascia too. It's like your whole body is, is the fascia. It's like yeah. it's, you're strengthening well, it's, everything. Yeah, a lot of, yeah one, it's interesting you mentioned that, Brian, because uh, I talk a lot. Um, I talk a lot about the fascia. Mm. Um, I mean, I, there are three things that I, that I if, if you want to bring it down, um, I, I believe that, that, that breathing, uh, correct breathing, and I do a lot of breath work with people, um, leading to better posture, leading to better movement will make you stronger. It'll never work the other way around. It'll never work. And, um, and as you're adding to this stuff, the, what you're talking about is what I call acute stressors. So yes. I consider like what we're kind of exercise we're talking about in acute stress. I also consider the deep breathing breath work, breath work and acute stress. It's why people don't do it because you have to consciously push your cardiovascular system to do this breath work. Everyone thinks yes. about it as like a meditation or a relaxation. It's really not. It's, it's like a cold immersion, a heat immersion, a fast. These, I yes. think about all these things. I, I know yes. you've heard us talk about it, but you know, just yes. connecting the dots. Here's a guy who's 69 crushing it. He's doing breath work. He's doing hit high intensity interval training. I'm sure you're a fa- you fast. Yes. Yep. Yes. So I don't, I never eat lunch. I never eat lunch. You start um, stacking. I, Go ahead. Sorry. I never eat lunch. Um, I, uh, I fast one day a week. Uh, and re- one of the really, really interesting things is, uh, and I think I'm drilling back into, um, oh, chap that does the ice work. Um, Wim Hof. Wim Hof. Wim Hof. Yes. Yes. Wim Hof. Um, I, uh, one of the things that I, that I found, and I mean, getting back to the kettlebell swing, we're talking about uh, biomechanical breathing as against anatomical yeah. breathing, so, which is exhaling on exertion. A lot, a lot of people, uh, I say that in the gym all the time, they just breathe wrong. Um, but one of the things um, that I found with, uh, with, with breath work, um, and it's one of these really, really interesting things that, I can't remember where I read it, where I saw it, um, but someone told me once, um, if you take your thumb, um, and I know we're talking about nutrition, there's a crossover here between nutrition and breathing. If you take your thumb and put it up behind your upper palate, 
there's a dent there, there's an indentation that shouldn't be there. Um, because of the way we're eating now, you know, we're meant to eat meat, so we're meant to eat on the our back teeth. So a lot of archaeological uh, diggers have found that, 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 that the skulls of, uh, of original Homo sapiens, that roof of the mouth was flat. So what's happening, because we're eating um, a lot of carbohydrates, which involves, uh, you know, not a lot of chewing, um, the roof of our mouth is actually, our, our jaws have become narrower and the palate, the back of our palate has become, got this dent in it. And I say to people, uh, you know, you can either put your tongue behind your back teeth, but there's a dent there. And it shouldn't be there. What that's doing is it's pressing up on the sinuses and it's causing a lot of breathing issues. Um, and the other thing that I talk about um, with breath work is, is breathing through the nose rather than the mouth. And there's a reason why we should be breathing through our nose. Is the only way that we trigger nitric oxide, which is a gas in the body, is through nasal breathing. And I say to people, that's why we've got ears in our nose and not in our mouth, because that's where we should be breathing. Um, so nitric oxide increases the uptake of oxygen in the blood. So uh, it gets right into the, it gets oxygen right into the capillaries, and uh, it turns the blood it turns the body alkalinic. And I, I, I'm not saying this is 100% correct, but I can't remember the last time I got sick. Can't remember the last time I had a cold. Can't remember the last time I had anything wrong with me. It's years. Um, yeah. But uh, because of that um, inhalation and that high increasing that nitric oxide. It turns the body alkalinic, and I believe that cancer cells cannot survive in an alkalinic environment. So I don't know. It's I, I just yeah. You you touched on so many fun ideas. Um, I I I I'm with you on every single thing you said. Uh, we probably could do a podcast on any one of those ideas. True. Uh, you know yeah. what I mean? I think well, that. Uh, you know what was the term, Brian? You used was it like ancestral hacking or what was it? Uh, oh, well, instead of, well, yeah, instead of biohacking, I like ancestral hacking where we live in this modern world and I don't think we want to do gadgets and gizmos and all that stuff. I think we need no. to ancestrally hack and how can we live like our ancestors in the modern world? And that is mm. all the things you talked about is proper breathing and fasting and cold therapy and hot therapy and, mm. and mm. not getting in some crazy cryo chamber that costs 500 grand. No. Uh, Although that's not. okay too. I know it's you're fine. not into yeah, yeah. it. It's I think fine. just, I think if you're getting in the cryo chamber, you should understand why you're getting in the cryo chamber. Or why? Yeah. Or just do the real thing once in a while. What, what if you jump in a lake? You know, I, I travel mm -hmm. for Thanksgiving a lot and we'll jump in the lake in Seattle mm -hmm. and it's freezing and it's great. I'll kill you. you. No, it's great. You. It's great. Or you could do it. You could go to a cold plunge and you could do it. You take a cold shower. Anyway, to, I want to, we don't have endless time here. So I want to hit two things. Sure. So just think of how we can hit these two in a few minutes is the, the grains. I posted about grains, you know, our community uh, is really behind this. And it, and it's, I don't think it's all about the carbs, right? Where it's, so, some people are just like carbs, carbs, candy to carbs. And I agree. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're eating way too many carbs. But I think mm -hmm. uh, as someone who you work with arthritic people, the grains are a huge mm -hmm. issue. And I, Massive. Never really had problems, but then when I cut out the grains and magically everything went away. So mm -hmm. let's talk about mm -hmm. grains and then let's talk about mental health. Yeah. I, um, I believe that, I don't know whether it's uh, uh, modern living where people need, I, I call it entertainment. Um, I don't know whether people are bored, they're searching for something, they're searching for feel good food. I call carbs feel good food. But certainly with, um, with grains and, and uh, because it causes so much inflammation in the body. Uh, I mean, you talk about inflammation and, and everything that goes wrong in the human body is some form of inflammation. Um, and it's been a breath of fresh air listening to a whole range of your, of your podcast, Brian, with your many, many guests. I haven't really got got a favorite they've all got a story to mm -hmm. tell but the problem with grains is is this especially uh, we we talk about this this um crossover effect in the brain um where where grains uh, literally cross that blood brain barrier and cause literally food obsessions um 
So, you know, it cut out the grains, but people are just so, um, <laughs> I suppose, ingrained in, you know, it's quick <laughs> food, it's, uh, but it's not healthy food. And, and I, I literally believe that, um, that, that, that anything you eat that takes longer to eat is better for you. Uh, mm. Because the amylose in our in our in our in the enzymes uh, when we eat that's why when you eat a piece of bread it just disappears in your mouth because it it just hits the bloodstream so quick and causes that spike in in it causes that spike in blood sugar. Uh, so it, it's it's really really hard to try and and get people to change and and I I would imagine this gym that I've been working at for the last seven years. Um, the very few people that I still see at this gym that I work at that are still there when I first started, A, I'd say 95% of them aren't there anymore. But the ones that are still there, I would suggest would weigh more today than what they did seven years ago. So mm. something's wrong. I but I, I think people just don't understand it. it, it You're talking about extra not fat. There to listen. Do you say they, they weigh more? They have extra fat. They're, they haven't like gotten a lot of muscle. They're just, they haven't got a lot of muscle. Um, no, they're just extra and fat. A lot of them just give up because they're fed this BS of, you know, exercise more, um, uh, eat less, but eat less of what? 99% uh, of the time it's... Um, <laughs> it's less carbs and you know it's really really simple um if you really want to summarize it the way i summarize it to people people come to me and say well, how come you look the way you look at your age and you know i've been flattered a number of occasions i've had people tell me i'm in my 50s i think somebody was stroking my ego when they told me i was in my mid 40s i thought that was a bit strange mm -hmm. um but uh i so say look really we we're designed to live on protein and fat you know, forget about, if you forgot about carbohydrates altogether, full stop, end of story, uh, no carbohydrates. I'm sure the body would figure it out for itself because, you know, cut out the insulin spike and you won't put on weight because insulin is the only hormone, I'm preaching to the converted, but insulin is the only hormone in the human body that puts fat on the human body. Simple, end of story. I it's so simple, but I just do not understand why people just don't don't get it. I they're just well, they're, they're, I, I'm they're, not saying I'm giving up, but uh, there's the majority of people. It's almost like I work in this age group, but I'd like to get a hold of people that are at a, at an age group slightly younger to warn them, because they get into this. A lot of older people, even above, let's say above forty, um, and I don't know what it is, uh, with all due respect to Dr. Gary, I don't know whether it's the medical profession that says take a pill and it'll all be okay. I, I just don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, I th to jump in, I think that, you know, people in your generation have been indoctrinated into a belief. Uh, you know, I could speak to kind of my colleagues, like doctors in this age range, when I bring these ideas to them. You know, they basically, if they're going to believe me, they're going to have to say to themselves that they were wrong for 20, 30, 40 years. And I think that's a, that's a bitter pill to swallow. We've said it before. So yes. I think that, I think that's true probably for anyone in their sixties, fifties, sixties, seventies, it's tough. I think that um, when I see people that are real progressive, when I see people that have gone through a trauma that mm. need to heal, when I see people that, um, you know, I just get to a point in their life where they're transformed. Maybe that's a psychedelic experience. Maybe that's a tragic health experience. Maybe they had a financial ruin. Maybe, maybe they had something really good happen to them and it opened their mind. So I would say being yeah. flexible, being for, for some reason, when you have your mind open, it's not a, it's not complicated to understand what we're talking about. It's not crazy to think that you should be eating protein and fat, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, there are two things that basically, I know we probably pushed for time here, but yeah. there are two things that were my, and you've heard about, the, have you heard about the Harajuki moment? Harajuki moment? I think you mentioned it early. I did, but I didn't, yeah. I didn't explain it 
Um, yeah, do it. I can't remember who the chap was, um, but he was a young fellow that decided to visit Japan. With, he's an American. He decided to visit Japan with two of his younger friends. And they were both quite lean, quite, quite, quite well, probably, um, I don't know, but athletes or whatever. And he was a really big, overweight fellow. And they, the three of them went to Japan. And they went to, I believe it's a place called Harajuku. And the three of them stood outside this clothing shop. And the two younger, fitter fellows said, oh, I think I'll go in and buy some clothes. I uh, think we should go in and buy some clothes. And the bigger fellow stood outside the shop and said, there's no point in me going in there because nothing's going to fit me. So two of them walked in and the other chap stood outside and he stood there and thought, what did I just say? Did I really say that? I've got to do something. And I think he went on to lose, I don't know, 50 kilos or something. And he now goes around the world speaking. I know where it was. It was in uh, Tim Ferriss's book, Before Our Body. I don't know if you've heard of that, uh, mm -hmm. Tim Ferriss's book. Uh, I think there's a chapter on that. Um, but, yeah, the two, two, I've had two Harajuku moments. One um, was, was losing, my wife and I losing our daughter that, that just um, changed everything in our lives. Um, and the second one was, uh, I was a real estate agent for 35 years and um, built up successful businesses. And my last business, a trusted staff member that was almost like a family member, defrauded my, my trust account and it literally ruined our business. It ruined our future, cost our superannuation, cost everything. So um, I got out of that business and uh, thankfully, I'd been transitioning out of that business for some time and getting into health and fitness. Thank goodness I did because it saved my life both, um, it saved it uh, physically uh, and mentally, but also financially because it enabled me to, um, to, to go down this path and, and, and try and help as many people as I could um, to, to do what I do. So, you know, my wife and I, my family will, will live with that trauma for the rest of our lives. But, uh, you, you know, you've got two choices uh, in life. You can either, um, you know, dig a hole for yourself and jump in and pull the dirt over your head um, or you can press on. And, and I know that there's, uh, you know, we're not alone in this. Um, and through COVID with the financial um, uh, ruin that it's caused so many businesses, so many people, it, it's that silent. Uh, I know it's in Australia. Australia, we sort of kind of got our heads around this COVID thing. Um, but I know in America, you're still fighting this. Um, but again, you know, just, just moving, just taking one step aside, um, how many people would, uh, and, and I know, uh, Brian, you talk about, you know, you still take public transport. You don't, you know, you just live your life, life normally. Um, and I've, I've done the same thing because <laughs> this sounds weird, but I almost sort of kind of wish I got the COVID virus to see what had happened. Um, um, because, uh, you know, I think so many people that are vulnerable it is, especially our elderly that are living in these God's waiting rooms, as I call them, and they're not getting their vitamin D. So they've got inflammation anyway. Uh, so COVID comes along. It reminds me of a boxer that's been knocked down to the count of eight and he gets up or he or she gets up. And then along comes COVID and bam, that's, that's all it's needed to, uh, you know, to knock them out completely. Um, which, which, which is a shame, but no one is talking, nobody is talking about living in a way that, that reduces or, or sort of kind of eliminates inflammation so that when COVID comes, comes along, it's only got one battle to fight and that's COVID and it'll win it, it'll beat COVID. But when you've got all these other things going on in your body, um, uh, yeah, it doesn't take much to knock you over. And that's the problem with a lot of these old age homes. Amen. You know, sticking them in these places, they don't get sunlight, so they don't get vitamin D. Uh, they're feeding them this horrible high-carb food. That's not helping, causes inflammation. Yeah. I got to say. Uh, yeah, I'm not I, the only one to. Uh, I got to say, your clients are very lucky to have you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I do my best and I fight and uh, I fight and kick and scratch and gouge and I've got, I've got my own tribe and, uh, um, you know, the ones that listen to what I do, um, uh, you know, are, 
are, uh, you know, winning the battle. But, you know, as I said, I don't want to cry poor, but, you know, I would, I would love to be able to do so much more um, with, um, with the Sapien tribe. But, you know, financially, it's, it's been a, you know, a little bit of a battle, but we're getting there and putting three, putting not, not three foods on the table, two foods, two feeds on the table. Um, and yeah, there's, there's lots of ways that I would, I would love to. The other thing, because of my age, I'm, I'm just not, um, uh, I'm not, um, and this is one of the challenges that I'm going to really tackle head on next year is getting a handle more on Facebook, getting a handle more on, on how to market what I do more. Um, because I'm not saying I've sort of kind of given up with social media, but it's, yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah, mentally it's a bit of a, bit of a battle to well, get your head around other stuff, but I'll do yeah. it. I think I've got to get my message out and I've got to get my message out more. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. We need some more voices from the older generations on social media and mm. you know, this podcast will help and spread your word. And, and uh, yeah, it's great to hear that uh, we, we kind of covered some of this mental stuff and it yes. sounds like the diet, if you adopt a sapien diet and lifestyle, you have the resilience, you have the, foundation yes. to tackle things and mm. so many people they don't have that so they're busy trying to just feel good enough to just get out of bed and make it to work much less yes. you know deal with some tragedy with their family and if mm. you have mm. the foundation and you're you're living right and you're eating right then it mm. sounds like you had the fortitude to to really not collapse well, I have, yeah so um, I have absolutely no doubt, absolutely no doubt that um, my mental strength has come about through my um, physical strength. The two have gone hand in hand. Uh, I, I, I literally do not know where I would be today. I mean, far... Uh, 10, 12 years ago, I was 27 kilos heavier than I am today. And I didn't do it through exercise. Didn't do it through exercise. I did it through, through a change of uh, nutrition to the ancestral way of living. Um, I, uh, so, yeah, I suppose um, I've, I think I've landed with the sapien. I've tried to put a handle on and I've struggled. You know, we call it ancestral. You call it... Um, all kinds of things, but I just gravitated towards the Sapien brand, if you want to call it a brand. It's a framework. We'll call it a framework. And I've, yeah. I've settled into that. And, uh, you know, I just wish you had no to tail in Australia. <laughs> um, <laughs> He's working on it. <laughs> We're working. No, yeah, I, I, I am. I, there's a lot of requests out there. But, yeah, no, I, I don't think – I don't want to take so much credit for Sapien. It's just – putting it together and then calling it something because I think a lot yes. of people have been searching for this and it's, <laughs> it just means living like a sapien. It's just, it's, mm. it's just natural and no one's quite figured it out yet. I guess I think paleo is close mm. and primal and there's this and that, but anyway, uh, speaking of sapien, thanks so much for being part of the sapien tribe. People can Thank go you. to sapien.org and, you know, find out more and join us there. And we have the sapien program and that's about it. We'll uh, come back next week with some more, great information and guests and all that. So thanks everyone. Thank you so much for that story. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you.